Innovation and Design Thinking IDT VTU Module 1 Innovation and Culture Exploring the work of designers across the globe Part 2 Client Consultant Relationships Building and also maintaining the relationships with the clients was globally seen as an important aspect of being a designer in a design consultancy. Research found that the nature of the relationship between the client and consultant was experienced differently in different regions. In North America, the relationship was collaborative. Customers got actively involved in the projects even in framing the problem or need. In Europe, the relationship was not collaborative and there is greater distance between the designers and the client. There is a resistance from client side to reverse relationship and being friendly. One designer told about clients that they are in charge and in the driver's seat and they deliver that harsher than US clients. Asian clients were also similar. Their concern is that the designers were reversing the service direction and ask the clients to make choices in the concepts of the design in midstream. Asian clients' expectation to get extras in order to improve the relationship. These differences on the designer-client relationship affected design process in these locations. In North America, there was more participation of the both the parties and were perceived equal status. Designers get regular feedback from the customer that allow to integrate the change into the design process on an ongoing basis. In these cases, there is a balancing client involvement in the process and, and also integrity of the designs. In these cases, clients had an adequate freedom to innovate. In Asia and Europe, the main challenge for designers was to design in the absence of regular interaction with and feedback from the client, so although they had more freedom to design. Designers spent a more time on design and more anxious about acceptance of the client. Process as deliverable Asian clients are thought to be unconcerned about how designers tackle design tasks. They don't care about the process, just show me the cool stuff, one source said. In North America, on the other hand, being a part of the process was highly prized. Clients wanted to be a part of the decision-making process. Different attitudes toward process as a deliverable had an impact on design practices, for example, because Asian designers were required to produce concrete and visual forms of the design much more quickly, whereas North American designers were allowed to remain conceptual and even deliver representations of their processes, rather than the design itself, as legitimate forms of progress. European clients seemed to fall somewhere in the center, albeit seeing the finished product was vital. The client says, your designers, show me visuals, as one designer put it. I'm curious to see how this will turn out. Meaning to be creative. This study found significant differences between North America and Asia in what it means to be creative. In numerous regions of Asia, authors were astonished and intrigued to learn that Western designers were thought to be too inventive. The meaning of this phrase is that Western designers were sometimes regarded as radicals for creating things that couldn't be manufactured easily and were only suitable for a niche market. They were simply too out there. In Asia, authors discovered when examining in-house designers that leveraging existing similar items as sources of inspiration was the norm. Designers drawing fresh designs day after day, in various locations, as they flipped back and forth between photos of similar products in publications or on relevant websites. The male goal of designers in Asia, that to create something that would fit into the existing product line. 
For North American and European designers concept of creativity is to stretch much beyond what is known or expected. For Asian designers concept of creativity is that new design should have harmony with available or existing products. This finding is consistent with cross-cultural research on individualism and collectivism, which implies that people from Western cultures like to stand out, but people from Asian cultures prefer to blend in and be seen as part of the group. Asian clients would request a design that virtually mimicked an existing hot product on the market. These requests perplexed Western designers but made perfect sense to Asian-born and trained designers. Across Professions Interaction Norms On superficial level many of the same roles and occupations existing across regions. Now it is interesting to see the differences at various regions how these occupations are evolved, the interaction and collaboration among professionals varying occupations. Multidisciplinary teams, in which designers of many stripes work closely together and even learn to contribute outside their own occupational boundaries, are highly valued in the United States. For example, mechanical engineers may participate in user research, while anthropologists may provide input that would normally be provided by industrial designers. In Asia, it is not the case. Asian fashion designers, for example, that there was less cross-training between designers and pattern cutters and that cutting one's own patterns would have been against the rules. Fashion designers in France and England were trained as pattern cutters and expected to be able to take on this duty or at the very least display a high degree of skill while working with a specialist pattern cutter. These professional jurisdictions had a big impact on what designers did and didn't do in different parts of the country as well as how they engaged with other professions while putting their design ideas into action. The role of the prototype Across all the regions, in-house firms, design consultancies and also industries, Prototypes have highly social roles and acts as objects for social interaction and feedback. Designers produced prototypes throughout the design process in all circumstances and used them to better understand their own designs and get feedback from others. Models, sketches, scenarios, CAD drawings, garment patterns and other items are examples of prototypes. The Designer's Disciplinary Training Example Mechanical Engineering, Industrial Design, Fashion Design, etc. as well as the local context influenced the construction and use of prototypes Example Client Expectations, Speed of the Design Cycles, etc. Designers, predictably, learned heavily on their disciplinary training when it came to the types of prototypes they were likely to make and the types of questions they were likely to ask through the prototypes. Although this matched their position in the design process to some extent, it was not a perfect match. Mechanical engineers, for example, were more inclined to discuss CAD drawings and physical prototypes that allowed them to visualize how the mechanisms would work, regardless of the stage of the design. Client expectations, both internal and external, influenced when and how prototypes were generated and used. External clients in Asia and Europe, for example, were more receptive to polished prototypes that looked like the real thing, but clients in North America tolerated prototypes that were strung together with duct tape and bailing wire. The Ecology of Design Education from the interviews conducted by authors concluded that ecologies around design education vary across regions. Students, instructors, administrators, potential employers, government organizations and professional groups are all stakeholders in all circumstances. By area, how these constituents engage with educational institutions, 
how much impact they have and how these interactions shape design education and the future work of students educated at these schools differ thanks for watching comment for any suggestions like share and subscribe for more videos